Welcome to Indie Corner, the place where we have no sense of time and where indie games can shine all within five minutes. Today's feature is Armillo by Fuzzy Wuzzy Games, and I'll be going over why it's a better value than Shovel Knight. All right, now Shovel Knight is a great game. I'm not here to bash it. I own it and I love it. However, the amount of hype it's getting really surprises me, given that there's other better value games out there which are being overlooked. Armillo is one of those games, and I'll be listing off why, starting off with the story. So in Armillo, you play, of course, as Armillo, coming back to your home planet after a vacation to find it invaded by these robots. It's already personal. You're already feeling a personal connection to this character. You feel bad for him, and you want vengeance for him. You want to save the planet for him. You want to make him feel better. You have sympathy. Whereas in Shovel Knight, you just kind of start off the game. You get a little bit of a backstory that, you know, he's kind of put down his shovel and now all of a sudden the kingdom's being invaded by all these bad guys and you just gotta go to a tower and save it. Like, what kind of personal connection is that? Now in Shovel Knight, the story is kind of promising. You know, you're trying to save the land from evil, but why should Shovel Knight care? His best friend looks like they died or disappeared. There's really no connection. I don't feel like I wanna help Shovel Knight defeat this order of no quarter. They're bad, I'm just playing it really because it's fun, not because of the story. So in terms of story, I think Armillo wins. Okay, now the next point is one of the most important points to any game, gameplay mechanics. And Armillo does something that's very unique. In fact, it's so unique, I can barely describe like what kind of game this is. Like you're just rolling around this 3D world. It's like a controlled pinball machine, but not even close to that. It's its own thing. As well, it throws in the collect-a-thon feel where you're trying to complete all these levels, collecting everything in it, like hitting cubes uh, and your friends, of course, and all of the upgrades. There's also 2D platforming in the special hidden levels. There's just tons of things to unlock and a lot of different gaming elements implemented into Armillo. Now Shovel Knight plays very well, but come on, we can all see where the inspiration is from. It's Mega Man and DuckTales merged together from the NES days. It feels exactly like Scrooge McDuck hopping around on his cane when you're putting your shovel down, hopping on enemies. Also in terms of difficulties, it's like a toned down Mega Man, and it's also more melee focused. Overall, it's good ideas. I'm just saying that Armillo is just much more unique than what Shovel Knight has to offer. Now, because Armillo brings in such good game mechanics all together and creates a new unique experience, which I think creates something better than Shovel Knight for gameplay, I'm gonna give this one to Armillo. Next topic is Upgrade Path. In Armillo, there's this shop where you can buy upgrades to make Armillo stronger and give him new abilities to access these areas of levels that you couldn't access before. This gives you a sense of progression and also gives you a sense of character growth. Now in Shovel Knight, there's an upgrade path as well. You can upgrade your shovel, your armor, your health, magic, as well as buy tons of relic, but none of it is required to beat the game, taking away from that special feeling of upgrading your character. Like in Armillo, you'll see black blocks in the first level, and you can't get past them. However, later on, you get an upgrade that lets you go through black blocks, making it satisfactory. Like, oh, I'm gonna go back to that level and do that. You don't have that in Shovel Knight. Also in Armillo, in the upgrade shop, you can see that there's a bunch of upgrades that are locked up. You just don't know what they are. So it gives you a greater incentive to progress through the story and unlock those and see how you can make Armillo stronger. So overall, I have to say that the upgrade for upgrade pass, Armillo wins this one. Next point is price. Armillo, $6. Shovel Knight, $15. Even if you thought these games were equal, right there, Armillo wins. Half price. Next point is a personal one. Progression bars. Armillo is full of them. You enter the game, you're at 20%. You go into a level, you've only completed 70% of this. Great incentive to go back and try to get that 100%. For me, it just bothers me. I need that 100% in all my games. In Shovel Knight, there's progression as well. There's feats as well as musical notes that you collect. But there doesn't seem to be really a point where it's like, this is how much you have. Okay, and the musical sheets, it's like zero out of 42, 10 out of 42, whatever, 46. It's just not as satisfying as seeing that 100%. It's there, but not as satisfying. So for that, I have to give it to Armillo again. Next point is soundtrack, and both of these games have great soundtracks. Just listen to this. So both soundtracks are great, although our Milo sounds a little bit darker and I'm more of a happy kind of guy, so I really like Shovel Knight. So I'm gonna give this one to Shovel Knight. Next point is motion controls. In Armillo, you can actually use motion controls to move Armillo around. Dude, nobody likes motion controls. All right, so motion controls are actually an option in Armillo. It's meant for advanced players that want more of a challenge out of the game. You don't actually need to use it, but you don't have that option in Shovel Knight, so hey, it's an extra option. Armillo wins this one. One last point I want to address about Armillo is the frame rate issue. Everyone's up in arms about the frame rate issue of Armillo. It's unplayable. Really guys, you're over exaggerating. Black and white socks, this is unwearable. Automatic transmission, this car's undrivable. 
Ice cream with a big spoon. This is unedible. Honestly, in my first playthrough, I didn't even notice it. So I don't know what the big fuss is about. Oh my God, the show's unwatchable. So there you go, Armillo has a unique gameplay experience. Better story, better progression, awesome music, just as good as Shovel Knight, just at a lower price. So if you're strapped for money, I definitely recommend pick up Armillo first. Although both games are great and you should definitely be adding Shovel Knight and Armillo to your collection. Did you know? Armillo is translated into seven languages. English, French, Spanish, Italian, German, Japanese, and Portuguese. All right, and now it's time for giveaway time. Four, Mighty Switch Force 2. So last week we had a giveaway for Mighty Switch Force 2, uh, or a contest, I should say, where you could enter to win a copy on the 3DS or the Wii U. So we got the names on this bag. We're gonna draw them out right now. So the winner of the 3DS copy of Mighty Switch Force 2 goes to this person ran on the paper. Beta at Beta Warrior. So congratulations on, on that. Uh, the next winner goes to, this is for the Wii U version of Mighty Switch Force 2. Goes to Ryan at Kuragane. Congratulations to both of you guys. This week's giveaway is Armillo for the Wii U, sponsored by Fuzzy Wuzzy Games. So big thank you to them for that. To enter the contest, simply find the tweet in the description below or go here to this page. You can find it there and retweet it. You'll be entered into the contest where we'll draw out the name next week on this show. And that's how you win your copy of our Milo. That's what I've got for this week's feature. If you want more features like this, you can join me every Wednesday where I pull out a Nintendo indie game feature it for you guys. Now you might have noticed all the news has been missing from this week's episode. That's because I've taken it, thrown it into another show called the Indie Corner Weekly Wrap-Up, which you can find Monday, and it'll update you on all your indie news that you might have missed. So you can find me there as well. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friend if you like indie games. I'll see you guys next week, and until then, keep on playing indie games.